And so the African book for March was last seen in La Paz. Oh dear. So I didn't really enjoy this one. But I do have some nice things to say about this book. And you know, I will say those nice things at the end of the video. <laughs> but let's get into it. Let's get, let me let me explain myself. First of all, this is a beloved book. This last time I checked, this had around 700 ratings on Goodreads and it was above a four. So a lot of people do like this. So I take my comments with a grain of salt, of course. But let's get into it. Let's we'll start with the premise. The premise is basically a Nigerian father one day comes in to our private investigation agency set in Ghana and hires the services of our protagonist, question mark, Emma, to find his missing daughter who was so i think one of my main issues with this book and why i didn't enjoy it that much is that this is not necessarily the mystery i was looking for the two mysteries that are set up in this book there's obviously the missing daughter and there's something else but those two mysteries are just the setup or the framework for us the reader to be told the life stories of different ghanaian and nigerian people who are loosely and closely connected to this mystery right throughout the book that's basically it i also personally think that this was very clumsily structured but that could just be because i didn't you know because i was expecting a classic mystery <laughs> and i didn't get that so it could be that but anyway this is more general fiction i felt like i was reading general fiction which is just not my jam like just not my thing at all so let's get into the structure in part one we are introduced to our detective our main character detective and the agency and they start detecting and investigating the mystery of this missing daughter and through the investigation we are introduced to all sorts of different people then for several parts after that we basically get the life stories of everybody anybody who was mentioned who we were introduced to we get their life story in those parts some of them are more succinct than others after a few parts and chapters we eventually come back to present day our investigation and unfortunately have to read our detectives the investigators learn the information that we now learned from reading those stories in those parts occasionally we'll get like a character story through the investigation through maybe a one of our investigators interviewing them or something the stories are sprinkled throughout the book sometimes they get entire chapters dedicated to a story sometimes it's a section in a current day chapter now as for the mystery itself the story i would say that this was not particularly strong or, or like that intriguing but that was not the point of this book the point of this book was to you know shine a spotlight on human trafficking which i can appreciate but it's not what i was looking for i also want to talk about the tone of the book this book was very serious like you know obviously the subject matter contained within it was very serious and also was treated very seriously but it also felt like a cozy mystery sometimes which oh my god which i don't enjoy whimsical quirky cozy mystery vibe with the grim serious subject matter that was in this book i didn't enjoy it like our private investigators were excited to get a case i'm like you guys someone's missing <laughs> and now to the main thing that i think hindered my enjoyment of this book and that is the writing i really found myself struggling with the writing of this book particularly in part one part one is like written in a very very flat way like just just nothing you know it's just very flat and it's also very over explained as if it's written for a non-african audience in part one the writing does not trust the reader to like google stuff yahoo boys are explained the word niger is explained things like that bolt there's an explanation for that the writing in general not just in part one felt very like clunky and stilted it kind of reminded me of how like trevor noah spoke when he was on the daily show like kind of over enunciating and speaking slower than he usually would i suppose to appease like a, a non-south african audience maybe who would find his accent challenging again not trusting the audience to like you know get used to it you get used to an accent like if you watch like um a scottish show like the limmy show or something the accent is challenging at first but you get used to it like eventually you understand what the person is saying but that's how it felt to me and that's how it read also it sounded and felt unnatural this in the book in this book this went beyond the usual formalness of Ghanaian and Nigerian English Ghanaian and Nigerian English is like very formal that was one challenge the other thing is that 
this writing, this book also did not trust the reader to retain information. It was so repetitive. Information that the reader has already learned is repeated amongst characters. Instead of speaking like Emma told Soa what they had learned. Instead of that, we get Emma telling Soa what she had learned in detail. <laughs> and we already know this. We know. I think they just needed editing. That, that did not help with my reading experience. I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was struggling. Oh my God, especially at the beginning, especially through part one. We got to part two and it was a little bit better, but the whole book I was kind of struggling. And the main thing I was struggling with is the telling not showing. That's like throughout the entire book. It doesn't make for an immersive reading experience. But the thing about that is that from part two onwards and in some other parts, the writing does not hold your hand sometimes. Like we have entire sections of characters, of Nigerian characters speaking Nigerian pidgin. And like unexplained. Granted, it's like not that hard to like figure out <laughs> what they're saying but still it's like okay you trust me to you know understand this dialect but you don't trust me to google what a yahoo boy is or to like use context to figure it out <laughs> so to summarize this is a very grim and serious general fiction maybe crime fiction novel with very simple and literal telling not showing writing that could have done with some editing to make it tighter and less repetitive which is mostly about the very real life horrors of human trafficking and modern slavery and is told in vignettes with a very weak central mystery narrative this was not for me this was a two star read for me but a lot of people love this book like on goodreads people people enjoy this book so it might be for you now for the positives i did promise you that there were some positives there were some things i did like about this the biggest positive for me was first of all the language i enjoyed all of the <laughs> nigerian pigeon and the you know the very the ghanaian english and also i enjoyed reading about places other than accra and abuja and lagos you know that was nice i especially enjoyed learning about benin city and all of the like historical and cultural artifacts in the city as well some of that learning happened in the book and some of it was like you know spurred by this book which was great i love that i always love learning more about you know my continent <laughs> i also liked the intent of this book if not the execution i think that if you are somebody who enjoys like very overt social commentary in your books you'll love this you know i you know i appreciated it I appreciate shining a light on things, but I prefer to get this type of information from newspaper articles, investigative journalism, which is dying, and like documentaries. Like, I don't mind if a message is in a story through allegory or metaphor or symbolism or whatever, you know, I don't mind that. But like, you know, I kinda, I need, I need, I need the story for you give me the commentary. That was last scene in La Paz. I really, really struggled through this book i'm not gonna lie like i had to force myself to read this book and i don't like forcing myself to read books but there were some things that i was getting out of it anyway spoilers i want to talk about some spoilers for this book um if you are interested in this book thank you for watching enjoy the book the main thing i want to talk about was the ending i think clifford should have just been allowed to get away with like murdering femi because like i don't care like like who cares whatever femi was a horrible person he was terrible like who cares like let him get away with the murder i think that Clifford not getting away with the murder was supposed to be retribution for all of the human trafficking that Clifford was involved in. But I would have liked for him to get punished for that specifically, not through the murder of Femi. Ultimately, what made it unsatisfying was not because you like, you like Clifford or care about him. It's because you like and care about Father Coyote, right? And Father Coyote, at the end of the book, is the he's the nicest person in the entire book and at the end of the book he's lost his love he's lost his job you know he's probably being ostracized by his community for being gay or whatever so it's like okay this character did not deserve that so the, that's the only reason why i wanted clifford to get away with it so that he could stay <laughs> with father coyote but that's it that was kind of the only strong feelings that were stirred <laughs> see you next month <laughs>